Hi and welcome back. I'm Monica Weitzel. We're here at Community Hotline and I'm glad you stayed with us because for our last segment tonight we're going to be talking with Mount Hood Caregiver Solutions and uh, Mount Hood um, Adult Daycare Center. <laughs> And with us tonight, we have Judith O'Connell, who's the board president of Mount Hood Caregiver Solutions. Thanks for being here, Judith. Thanks for having me. It's a good opportunity. Yes. Well, I, Mount Hood, uh, your organization is real close. It's right in the, right in the area yeah. here. Yeah, 223rd and Gleason. Okay. Tell me a little bit about what you do, what, what your organization is all about. Well, Mount Hood Caregiver Solutions stemmed from the business I opened a couple years ago, which was Mount Hood Adult Day Center. And the day center was really focused on getting our participants to feel independent and um, retain dignity and make them feel like they're going to a club where um, they could meet new friends. And, and who are the people that go to the Adult Day Center? Uh, we work with um, everyone from Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, stroke victims, to somebody who's um, living with their uh, family and they just need some social interaction. Mm, okay. um, need a break. Yeah, they need they need a break. You know, even um, husbands and wives, if they're together 24-7, it doesn't go well. Same thing happens with your mother. You sometimes. need a break. <laughs> and unfortunately, as you age, your social circle just shrinks. And um, this is a way to open it back up and stimulate the mind. And so we were doing that and felt really good about it. But what we found is our caregivers needed at least as much support mm -hmm. and care. So we started our first support group, which grew into our second support group which grew into our third wow. support group. So and there's a lot of need out there for that. There was a ton of need and ton of need for education. People didn't know where to turn and so we were doing a lot of referrals. Um, and we wanted to put that all into a package so that we could receive additional funding through grants and other things so we could grow it and have more support groups and more support for those caregivers at home. Um, the scary statistic I bumped up again when against when we started is, is that caregivers actually tend to or more often um, pass away before their loved ones. Oh, geez. Well, yeah. That's depressing. Yeah, it is. And, so. and, you know, I've, I've been in a situation of being a caregiver before. It's very stressful. It's very hard. It's exhausting. And, and the hardest thing that I remember is asking for help. Right. Is that something that you find? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we have um, people come in and they say, you know, I don't, I'm not a support group type. <laughs> I'm just angry all the time and um, that's you know absolutely true and then yeah. a couple months later they're going to the support groups and they found people who feel the same way and they can let go of the guilt and start to find solutions for that guilt, anger. The resentment. Yeah. Because yeah. it doesn't matter how much you love somebody yeah. if you're taking care of them 24-7 yeah. that's tough. It's, it's that's a tough lot of work. Because it means supplementing your own needs sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It's great work uh, yeah. It makes you feel good on some days, and some days it doesn't yeah. feel like a privilege. It feels like a burden. So tell me about the support groups. What what goes on at the groups? Is it just, is it just talking? What what? Um, there we structure around a topic, um, but our support groups lead the support group. You know, okay. we'll start with a topic. We'll talk about. There's coconut oils was very exciting recently. So everybody wanted to know more about coconut oil. Can it really reverse Alzheimer's? And so we did tons of research and talked about that. Wow. And, Inconclusive, surprise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there, again, no miracle yeah. cure. Yeah. Um, so we talked about that and for a few minutes, and then we go around and we ask everybody how they're doing and what the group can help with them with. And if you get a group of uh, 12, 50-year-old to 90-year-old, we have 90-year-olds in wow. our support groups, women. You that's got a caregiver? A, yep, yep, women and men. That is a wealth of information. Um, if you're... In the beginning of the situation, there's somebody who's already been through it. And so it's really nurturing for folks to do that. Yeah. Uh, support groups have a higher efficacy than even one-on-one -on -one counseling, wow. which I thought that was another That's amazing statistic yeah. I came up against. Yeah. And, you know, if you think about just Alzheimer's, um, every 70 seconds somebody's diagnosed with Alzheimer's, yeah. That means every 70 seconds, there's a caregiver out there going, what now? Oh, no. what, what do I do now? Yeah. yeah how do you know, I read recently an article about um, your organization in Boom Magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, that was it, correct? Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and I know November was National Caregiver Month. Yes. And uh, I was reading about the, a couple whose daughter was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and yeah. she was like 54 years old or something yeah. like that, which... I, appalled me yeah you know scary, I thought, oh my. Scary yeah scary scary. Stuff. it's very scary it's very scary and so the caregivers were you know her parents who were yeah. in their 70s yeah 
And uh, yeah, I can imagine they yeah. probably could use all the help they could get. They did. They, 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 and they did. had great things to say yeah. about, um, about the support that they got. Yeah, caregivers and, um, I tend to want to give more than they take, and uh, Luther and Betty are no exception to that rule. Um, they've been great supporters of us, and we've been supportive back to them um, all the way through the process. Their wow. daughter's uh, currently living in a community, um, but they're continuing to um, come to the support groups and get the support they need. Yeah. Um, our support group isn't just, you know, people will ask me, well, can I go to the support group? I don't have anyone at the day center. Well, it's not just for people at the day center. We have people whose loved ones have passed away and they're in the transitions group. Um, oh, okay. People tend to do what they've always done. And if you've been a caregiver for nine years, a lot of women will jump right back into that caregiver role. And we wanted to give them an opportunity to explore what they want to do next. And they go to movies and, you know, just hang out and try to just figure out who they are now that kind they're not the full time caregiver. To do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So that's what the transitions group is for. But they're open to everyone. It's not just for oh, folks that use great. the day center. Now, Tell me about Memories in the Making. Oh, it's a very exciting project that um, Alzheimer's Association um, is bringing it from the East Coast, and um, we're going to be their pilot project for it. Uh, there's a lot of early onset that's happening, and that's what you were talking about earlier right. with that um, gal that got diagnosed at 52. Okay. Um, and there's things that you can learn even when your memory's fading, and art is one of them. You can become a better artist with Alzheimer's. You know, it's hard. You probably aren't going to be a better chemist, <laughs> but you can be a better artist. That wow. part of your brain, your art will get better and better. Really? And so it's a great way to introduce success in a situation where daily failures yeah. are happening. So, because it must be so frustrating, especially in early oh, stages when you know what's yeah. going on, but you can't stop it. Right. But to be able to have some successes, that's great. So, so what's going on? This is you're the pilot project, so yeah. that means that the Alzheimer's yep. is it Alzheimer's Association? Yeah, the Alzheimer's Association is um, screening everyone for us um, at the day center. Uh, no, they uh, call the Alzheimer's Association um, hotline. Oh, okay. And then they'll screen everybody, and we'll have about five to six people in the class, and we're going to run them every six weeks. And it's a six week long class and um, you'll come in and uh, the paper's out in front and we'll talk about different topics. It's a great way um, to bring up old memories. You know, we can mm. be talking about fall if we're doing leaves. Um, our first topics are gonna be in the spring, so that's always fun. Everybody's got great spring memories. Yeah. <laughs> it's when we're the most ornery, so. Is that, is that when I we're the most so. ornery? I okay, so. well, that's your memory. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's an art class, in, but in, incorporate, I mean, are they drawing, painting while they're talking about art? What, what's it's more of a series of experiences than it is class. I'm not going to try and teach them um, to do, uh, become artists, but we're going to try to have um, experiences that build on each other. Um, the tools that we have are first notch um, art uh, tools. Uh, we're doing watercolors and we have watercolor pens. Um, our, the gal that came in, Margaret, came in from Alzheimer's Association and she set us up with just wonderful materials. Mm. So it doesn't feel like construction paper and crayons. That's the worst, you know. <laughs> right. You'd hate to come in wanting to learn about art and um, be part of that experience and then have that. But it's just really nice materials. And the art that's produced in these um, sessions are just amazing. Wow. So if someone is interested in, if they ha know somebody who has Alzheimer's or if somebody has Alzheimer's and they're you know, able to, to contact you, um, they contact the Alzheimer's Association? If they want to be this? part of the Memories in the Making, they can contact us at, our, um, at Mount Hood Adult Day Center. Okay. And then we'll um, refer them to the Alzheimer's Association and they can go through that process. Um, and if they'd like to be part of the support groups, they can call that 503-512-7373. And that number will um, bring you right to me, actually. <laughs> and you'll yeah, talk to me. Good. Or um, we have Michael McDuffie, who leads all of our support groups and has done an amazing job from us since we he's started. all of them, huh? Yeah, yeah, he really does great. Um, so he'll, he's also on the phones there and can answer questions both about memories in the making um, and, and the support the, groups. Wonderful. Now, I mentioned earlier the um, November was a National Caregiver Month. Yeah. You had a big gala yes. um, 
to celebrate uh, and to honor caregivers. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, it was, it was an amazing event. I it surpassed all my expectations. Really? Oh, yeah. Good. Well, it was our first year, so you're always very nervous. Your first yeah, I'm year. sure. You have no idea <laughs> if it's going to be Wonder a success. If anyone's going to come? Yeah. Our target audience is usually at home, um, working very hard, so they're hard to reach. And, mm -hmm. um, get their attention. So I went to all the area support groups um, on the east side and I invited all the caregivers from those support groups in and asked them to give us the name of one person they thought they'd like to honor. And we got the stories of each of them. So it was 10 caregivers and they came that night and they were honored mm. and there's posters up and um, so were you telling their stories a little bit? Or? Yeah, we yeah. well we left the posters up there. It's and that a, had they're a very on? modest group. They <laughs> don't they don't consider themselves heroes, um, even though they're even going though they above, are. Yeah, yeah above and beyond yeah. the call of duty every day. Give me an example of some of the uh, situations. I mean, I, we know about Luther and Betty. Yeah, say, with their and Betty. Fifty some mm -hmm. year old daughter with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other caregiver um, situations? We have another one that came and started with us right after we opened um, a couple years ago and she was he was diagnosed early also and she fought all the way through his disease they tried every single thing they could to um, delay it and make it work well you know to right. get through it um, and when they came felt like well I don't really want to go to a community because I'm not old I don't have a walker and yeah. he was fit I mean uh, yeah yeah we we would go on runs <laughs> Oh. <laughs> he was very wow. fit. Wow! Um, however, the he, mind wasn't. Yeah, yeah. no, not you know, at we, all. And you, so probably a few pictures here. I oh, want to yeah. bring those up yeah, before let, I forget. Yeah, but, absolutely. But go, ahead, but go ahead and keep telling me about it. Um, oh. Oh, for example, what? Oh, what is this? We have. Um, this is Dr. Elise Leland, and she's on the board of the prof, um, nonprofit. And not only is she an amazing doctor, she's also an amazing cellist, and she played for us. Um, at the gala that night. Oh, that was that was at the event itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is our gardening club outside. They're planting herbs for our cooking club. So Fun. all the clubs are working together to keep us fed there. <laughs> Here we are in our workroom working on the um, scrapbooks. Uh, we have about eight scrapbooks now that have been all been done. Uh, that's Alicia uh, Van Loom. Uh, she's at Portland State, and she's been working with us for about a year and a half, and she's an amazing, I don't even know what they call them when they're scrapbook, scrapbookists. <laughs> scrapbook. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and um, this is both the hands of our interns and of our participants oh. and of our caregivers. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> is art. <laughs> that is art. <laughs> I love it. That's Kathleen Kennedy, and she's our horticulturist, and she leads um, uh, our gardening club once a week. Great. So she brings in really great stuff. And that's Sandy, and she's working in the cooking club. Those are sticks in chocolate, and they're making um, candies for bringing home to their caregivers as oh, gifts. Oh, nice. So like it's that. fun. St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. Yes. I'm hoping. <laughs> And we have a good time. <laughs> I bet you love the hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we do work with some folks that are adults with disabilities. Um, this is Clancy, and she's getting her hair done. We have a salon right in the center, so oh, you can great. come get your hair done, a pedicure. Uh, oh, go home and feel good about yourself. Yeah. I like that. Mela Mendez. Um, we are always talking and honoring our past, and especially our veterans and he's demonstrating um, his Air Force photo that his wife brought in. Oh. Yeah. choking me up there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, we've got a lot of heroes that yeah. we work for, you yeah. know, like both the caregivers um, and our participants are right. often heroes. So before we run out of time, tell me a little bit more about um, we, that if, peop if people have, um, if they're caregivers and they need some I need a break. Mm -hmm. um, does it is it for any kind of caregiver the the um, your support groups? I mean, does it is it yes. just it's not just Alzheimer's, not just Parkinson's, no. it's any kind of it, caregiver. What we found is that the um, situation is very similar despite the disease, the feelings, um, yeah. the guilt that you feel when you leave. Um, I should be able to do everything for them. Yeah. And know. you do feel that way. Yeah. yeah. 
should be able to be all of it. And, and what's wrong with me for not being able to do that? Yeah, why know? can't I take care of this situation? Or why do I feel guilty? Yeah. Why do I feel resentful? Why am I angry? And all the science and the statistics back up that not only will you be healthier and have a better quality of life by using a day center or bringing someone in and getting away, um, but they'll do better. There's less behaviors at home if you're using a day center, and there are several day centers in the, or in the area. We're not the only one. There's also Lambert House and um, a few others. So and I think we're the only two on the east side, but <laughs> there are other ones. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so, so the, if, you, if you're at home and you, um, you needed some help, you could start with the support groups. It doesn't have to be a big first step. It can be small. Yeah. And the, the support groups, once you start, can you just go as needed? Yeah, or go, absolutely. I mean, do most people go on a really regular basis? Yeah. Once they? they get started, they tend to go every week. We have one gal that goes to um, all of the groups. Really? Yes. So she'll go to six support groups every wow. month. Oh. Um, and like I say, your age, your social circle gets smaller and yeah, smaller. So yeah. those are her friends, and that's her. You know, that's that's great. I want to say support group, but that's what they are. Yeah, They're her yeah, support system. Yeah, yeah. So anything else that we need to know about um, Mount Hood Caregiver Solutions, the day center that I, we haven't covered? Um, just the memories and making is coming up. I wanted to make sure that we highlighted that happening, okay. and um, I also want to thank the community for their support. Uh, the gala was amazing, and that was from the support of the local business owners and um, well, the you do it again? community members. Yeah, every year it's going to happen. Wonderful. First Thursday in November. So. Good. We'll look forward to it. I'll have you on in, in uh, maybe September or oh, October. that would be great. That so would be great. people will not forget about that. That's <laughs> great. Well, thank you so much, Judith, okay. for being on tonight. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and thank you. And you're doing an important thing, and I, I'm sure the caregivers out there <laughs> salute you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining us tonight on this episode of Community Hotline. I hope you've enjoyed our guest tonight. I know I have. I'm Monica Weitzel. We'll see you here next week. When disaster strikes, emergency professionals may be overwhelmed. Can you care for yourself and loved ones until help arrives? Can you help neighbors amidst the chaos? Are you ready? Get ready. Join a community emergency response team and learn skills that will save lives. The City of Gresham offers free CERT training. Sign up for the next class and get ready. What is it like to have a loved one die? Each month, over 300 children and teens who have experienced a death turn to the Dougie Center for Grieving Children. Inside, they find a safe place where they can share their experiences and move through the grieving process. The programs at the Dougie Center are funded by private donations. Thank you for making it possible for kids like me to attend groups free of charge. The Dougie Center, because grief comes in all sizes.